I'm going to enter a name. So let's click on sign up. A new user account should be created. And we are on the products page, as you can see. And it looks already quite great. We have our title here. Um, we have our list already populated with our two products, so plumbing and mozzarella. Let's go to categories. Okay, great. Again, we have our two categories displayed, services and food. And let's go to orders. Obviously, we have no orders yet, but everything seems to work quite fine. So we can close that and continue working on our um, app. So let's add another screen. But this time, I'm going to add a pretty fine screen. So I'm going to add an info screen. And maybe yet, let's use um, the info and action screen. So I'm just going to click on that. And this is going to be product. Let's create that screen. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do, we're actually going to create a link. So basically, this is going to be a sub. Um, this screen is going to be a sub screen of each of these uh, uh, items, basically. So if a user clicks on a product, he should be brought to this page. So how are we going to do that? We're going to first of all say on press when one of the items in this list is pressed, we want to go to our um, product page, okay? I want to have a transition this time. So if we go to our product page now, okay, we should have the ability to access the current page's product, so the current product's name. So what does that mean? As these two pages are linked, these two screens, a dialog recognizes, okay, this product page is a sub-page of this page, and basically, this should be populated with a product from our database and whatever product is clicked here. So we can now have access to uh, all the data. So what can we do? We can say, for example, this image should be a dynamic image and it should be the current product's image. Okay. This here should be the description, maybe. So let's change that to description. And let's remove all this text here. And let's just say this should be the current product's description. Okay. Let's actually drag that a bit down. Let's add another field here. Let's call this field product name. Okay. Let's copy that again. Drag that up, up there. Okay. I'm going to call this, this is going to be the uh, current product's name. And at last, I just want to add the price. So um, the price is going to be, um, again, I'm going to copy this, drag that down here. I'm just going to say, okay, this is the current product's price let's also modify this button here so let's say okay this button should say uh, purchase for and again current product price and let's say it's in dollars so let's add a dollar before that in the icon let's say it's a buy is there a buy icon or money like this okay great so we have our product page already working um, Next, let's let's add a category page. So um, let's add another page, and we can add a list page this time. So let's add a list page, and we can have a, a simple list, maybe or yeah, a simple list like this. Um, product categories. That's what we can call it. Create screen, and this is going to be a very simple um, um, page again. So if a user clicks on a category here, so let's say okay on press. We want to link to our product categories uh, screen, and this product category screen should display um, all the um, basically all the products within the category. So what it's going to do is going to be a list of products, and the filter is going to be the current categories products. Okay, so only products within this current category. We can change the title again. So this should be products in uh, current categories name category okay and again this is the same thing we have a title which is the product name subtitle could be the price so the product's price and left section should be the image the current product's image and again on press we want to link to the same page which is our product page so this page here if a user clicks here he'll be brought to this page and we pop this page will be populated with whatever product was clicked here let's remove this uh, icon here and let's also add a back button. So let's add a left icon. So it'll be an arrow bat back and just this link back to the page we were at before. Okay, so our app is starting to take some form. Uh, next, what I want to do, I want to add an order page. So how I'm going to do that? I'm going to add another screen. And this screen could maybe be, um, let's see if there's a suitable screen for that. Let's see list, miscellaneous. 
Okay, we could use we could use the form screen. So let's try out the form screen. Let's click that, and let's that's going to be called purchase. Let's click, click create screen. Okay, and um, or actually let's remove that. What we're going to do is we're going to just add a going to add another component, and this component is going to be Stripe payments, and we're going to just drag the Stripe payments field onto here. Okay. We're also going to link this button to this page. So the user clicks on this button. Okay, we want to add an action. We want to link to our purchase um, screen. And this time we want to have a modal. I think that is more suitable. So we have our purchase screen. The title of this uh, is going to be purchase the current product's name. So we have access again to the current product as the current product is sent from this screen to this screen. And let's just center this payment screen here and the user can now pay this product by entering um, his credit card number and clicking on pay now but let's also add some more information let's maybe add a text here and let's say um, this text is going to say complete your order for current product's price no sorry current product's name okay um, like this and let's also yeah I think that's 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 it let's leave it like this let's add the payment button here and what you want to do now is you want to first of all connect your stripe to this um, um, to Adalo so you can connect your stripe account and receive payment I'm not going to do that now but that's quite easy just click on connect with stripe create an account or log in with your stripe account and um, complete the setup but I want to continue the stripe payment so the amount of the payment what the user should pay should be the current product's price, obviously. Okay, the description should can just be the product's description. The email field, so the email where the pro, uh, buyer receives uh, the receipt, should be the, the obviously the current user's, the logged in user's email. And once the submit button is clicked, um, which says pay now, we wanna um, create actually, we wanna create a new order. The order name can just be the um, the, log, the logged in user's uh, email maybe. The user is going to be the logged in user and the product is going to be the current product. So what does this do? Once the user pays and it works out, um, a new order is created with the user who ordered this and the product which he ordered. And let's click done. And let's also add um, a, a confirmation page. So maybe let's add another screen and let's go to miscellaneous. Um, let's see if there's something uh, relevant. Actually, let's just add a blank screen like this. Call the confirmation. Okay, let's create the screen. Let's add a component. So um, let's search for an icon maybe. Oops, the text. Let's say purchase successful. Like this. Uh, let's enter the style. Let's make that a lot bigger. So let's make that like 30 size. Let's center that like this. Let's drop that here. And um, let's just copy that. And let's make the copy a bit smaller. Let's enter the style again. And let's say this is going to be of size 20. And so let's say you have so you have purchased the product. And first of all, we have to link. So once the user clicks on buy now, submit button, we want to create a new order and we want to link to the um, to the confirmation um, screen. So let's click done. And now we have access to the product. So you have purchased the product, current orders product name for current orders product price. And you can add another something else. Your order will be shipped soon and you will receive an order confirmation to your email at and then maybe the, the current users, logged in users email. And let's also add a button. We want the ability to go back. So let's add a button here. Just a simple button. And this button is going to say okay maybe just gonna say okay with a home icon 
and if the user clicks that, you should be brought to the home screen. Okay, and that's basically it. So let's preview our app now. Let's click on preview. I'm going to choose the iPhone XS Max now. And let's go through all the screens we have. So first of all, we have our product screen, which shows all the products we have. We have the category screen, which shows the categories we have, and the orders, which is currently empty. So let's start off the products. Once clicking on an individual product, we should be brought to the detailed product view. So let's click on plumbing. And great, you can see it worked. We have our title here, plumbing, the image, the name of the product, the description, the price, and the nice icon which says, or the button which says purchase for $200, which is the price. So let's go back. Let's click on categories and let's see if this works. So let's click on the services category. And we're brought to the products in service category page. And we can see there's only one product in services, which also is correct. The um, only plumbing is in services. So if we click on plumbing now, we're brought again to the product page. So that works perfectly fine. Let's click on the food category and we have our mozzarella and also works perfectly fine. Great. So let's go actually back and let's try purchasing our plumbing. So let's click on purchase. And I uh, clicked on the plumbing uh, product and clicked on purchase and we're now shown the purchasing um, page basically which says complete your order for plumbing and a user can now enter his or her credit card uh, information and click on pay now and will be shown the confirmation page. I won't do that because this will actually now use a real credit card and I don't want to buy my own demo product so I'm going to remove that but let's actually just also take a look at how the uh, an order would look so let's create a new order let's click on uh, view edit records let's add an order let's say the order is just doesn't matter test the user is going to be the one we just created and the product let's say is mozzarella let's click save and if we just now preview our app again and click on orders we should be shown our first order here so our mozzarella which was bought a few seconds ago and um, yeah we have a list of all, all our orders so that's basically it um, that's our application, works quite nicely. We have, again, our list of products, uh, our categories here with all the individual products within the category and also um, our orders that we did, as well as the ability to purchase new products. Um, uh, and yeah, that's basically it. I hope you learned something and I want to see you guys for the next tutorial with NoCodeHQ. Bye.